Um, all right, I'm with Roberta Reilenu uh, from Meta AI, and uh, we're going to be chatting a little bit about uh, game development, game AI, and a little bit about your work. Uh, so just to get started, uh, we would really like to know uh, what got you into like game dev or the research side of game development, uh, basically. How, how did you get here? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, thanks for having me. First of all, it's uh, like a really amazing uh, event so far. Um, yeah, so I think what I find really unique about games is uh, the environment they can provide for doing AI research and in particular training agents that can actually interact with the world and make decisions in a complex, rich world uh, and uh, try to optimize for some kind of reward or learn from feedback and learn from uh, the world itself. And I think this is like uh, really uh, unique because uh, these games, uh, first of all, they are created by humans. So in some sense, we know they provide a real challenge for humans, most of them. And then you also have like great diversity across uh, these different games, right? So you can think of trying to uh, train agents that are more and more general and can handle more and more of these games, which I think is really interesting. Uh, and other than this, I think it's also really nice because you can uh, very easily uh, train these agents, which can sometimes uh, be very computationally expensive. Uh, and uh, this provides a really good test bed and uh, uh, it's literally like a very safe environment, right? You cannot really do this with uh, other applications like robotics or other things because it's uh, much less safe. So I think it's just like a really an amazing uh, place to do uh, a research and uh, really get to try to build agents that are more and more uh, 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 you know, like general and can deal with more and more uh, like uh, new things in the world and uh, learn from that uh, in a more similar way uh, like humans do. Um, I think uh, we're also like starting to see uh, a lot of excitement uh, in uh, not only training agents uh, from uh, that learn only from experience, but also from potentially humans playing these games and trying to interact with humans. So I think there's a lot of interesting research that can be uh, done there as well. And that segues perfectly into my next question. So, uh, given given your work, current or, or you know recent, uh, what are you most excited about? Uh, like, what were you like? This is very interesting, and you want to share? Uh, yeah, sure. So, uh, I think uh, what some some of the things that are very interesting to me right now are just trying to understand better the current methods we've been developing. So I think so far we've been developing uh, a lot of great algorithms uh, that work very well on things like Atari or, uh, you know, maybe some more complex games like uh, Go or Starcraft and so on. But I think we're uh, pot potentially reaching some of the, you know, limits of uh, doing that. So I think it will be very exciting to start seeing uh, training agents that can play many of these games uh, and uh, potentially, you know, get to a point where we can uh, actually actually, uh, you know, get a new game that the agent can much more quickly uh, learn to adapt to and learn to solve uh, given, you know, some like prior, uh, you know, prior training on many of the other games or perhaps learning from uh, human data sets of uh, gameplay, which I think is also like a very promising uh, research area right now. Um, yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with that. And that, um, you know, the promise of the general agent that can play any new game is, is definitely something uh, a bunch of us are chasing, right? Um, if, if we were to get that, uh, how do you think that would impact game development as a process? Like, what would change? Yeah, that's a really uh, interesting question. Uh, one thing that comes to mind is uh, potentially better testing methods for uh, new games, right? So if you can build uh, agents that are much more similar in the way we explore a certain game or like we uh, try to do things that are not necessarily, you know, driven by the goal specified by the game, but rather, uh, you know, I mean, a much more kind of like looking for fun things to do or interesting things to do or novel things to do. I think if we can instill those sort of concepts into the way uh, agents interact with uh, these games and these worlds, right? I think then we have a better chance of doing some kind of like uh, interesting uh, uh, or like, you know, f much more scalable and uh, cheaper potentially uh, testing of uh, these games. Uh, so that's yeah, one one thing that comes to mind at least. Yeah, no, I, I think testing could benefit a lot from, from this agent for sure. And uh, from, from your vantage point at Meta AI, which definitely a lot of interesting stuff happening over there, uh, what do you think the future of AI, game AI is going to be looking like, you know, in a few years? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question and I think a pretty hard one to answer right now uh, as things have been uh, advancing really quickly. 
Uh, I think, uh, you know, I mean, I think the, we're obviously seeing a lot of a lot of interesting stuff uh, coming out right uh, from the AI world, uh, both research and uh, probably like I'm hoping this will enable many, many applications. I'm very excited about yeah, the applications this can enable in games, but also beyond this in like scientific domains and so on. Uh, I think there's, you know, great potential for uh, things to get, uh, you know, really, really exciting and hopefully, you know, solve some of the problems we cannot solve uh, right now. Uh, that being said, I think uh, there is also like a lot of uh, danger with these systems because we don't understand them very well. Of course, they're trained on uh, these kinds of like, you know, human data, which already has like a lot of, you know, our own biases and issues embedded into them. So I think uh, there should be w much more work and much more thoughts, uh, thoughtful process around uh, how we can make these uh, systems more robust and really make them do what we want them to do and not optimize for some proxy you know, reward or uh, objective function that doesn't really capture everything that we want them to do. I don't know what's the answer to this. I think it's a really complicated problem. And I think a big part of that will be also getting people from all sorts of like backgrounds together to think about this problem with like different values uh, and so on. And also probably uh, some kind of like, uh, you know, governmental or like uh, political solutions. I don't think uh, the technical part is the, the, the only important part of this, but I'm really hopeful uh, there's going to be, or like, re yeah, I'm really uh, hope there's going to be much more work uh, in this direction. Um, yeah, no, you, you bring up a, a lot of very interesting points. I want to do a quick follow-up. Um, you, you mentioned biases and how mm -hmm. uh, we want to get, if we get these systems into a more diverse uh, community, then uh, some of those biases can be addressed, right? Mm -hmm. um, how can we as a game development, game AI community, mm -hmm. make some of these tools and, and methods more accessible to people? Mm, I see. Yeah, uh, I think I'm a big believer in like open sourcing uh, tools and, uh, you know, both in terms of like algorithms and obviously, you know, environments or games uh, and even models, uh, big models that, uh, you know, like only, let's say, like a small number of companies can train. Right. Uh, so I think that's a good way uh, of uh, getting, you know, the whole community into the discussion of like what's wrong with these uh, models or like what's good, what's bad about them and coming up with solutions to, to fix them, right? I don't think like a small number of companies or people should be deciding uh, what the future of uh, this should be, right? So uh, I think that is a good way of doing it. I think there's it comes with some pitfalls because they, they could, uh, you know, create some damage in the short term, but I think in the longer term, uh, it will be important to at least have people thinking about this, discussing it, and uh, you know, trying these models out and actually like finding their uh, you know uh, their uh, faults and uh, limitations and so on. Because of course, uh, you know, uh, sometimes it's not uh, it's in the interest of everyone. I think to do this. Um, you know, that, that's a very insightful perspective. Uh, before the the interview, we we're talking a little bit about like the um, audience uh, makeup and like the different demographics that we have here. Um, and as I mentioned, like the, the demographic is mostly towards the younger, like students, uh, you know, early indies. Uh, so as, as we were saying, the, this is like the next generation of, of game AI developers, right? If you had one advice for them or a main advice for them, what, what would you want it to be? Yeah, that's a hard one. Um, I'd say have fun and don't worry too much about, uh, you know, your career, or like long term future and do try to do what's most exciting. Uh, right now right and try to learn from that and try to put uh, stuff out there try to build to uh, you know uh, try to do what's most exciting and uh, where you think you can have uh, most impact uh, potentially with your unique skills and background and so on um, so yeah I think that's that's pretty good advice um, well looking forward to your talk tomorrow and thank you so much for your time thank you for much for uh, answering our questions and we'll be seeing you around thank you very much for having me no